Is global warming true? Is the earth warming? Are humans the cause and is it dangerous? 33 national science academies believe global warming is true. Sixty-eight national and international scientific organizations believe global warming is true. Not a single organization of scientists in the world says global warming is not true. Ninety-seven percent of active climate scientists accept that global warming is true. But you do not have to take their word for it. You can look at the data and decide for yourself. To understand global warming, we first need to review the greenhouse effect. It begins with the sun's rays passing through the atmosphere to strike and warm the Earth's surface, causing it to emit infrared or heat rays. Atmospheric greenhouse gases like CO2 absorb the outgoing heat rays and re-radiate some of the absorbed energy back down to the surface, warming it further. Without the greenhouse effect, Earth's surface would be nearly 60 degrees colder and we could not live here. The more CO2 in the atmosphere, the warmer the Earth. The greenhouse effect is a fact of physics, but has it caused detectable global warming? The front panel of this chart shows that human-caused carbon emissions remained negligible until the Industrial Revolution, then rose steeply due to fossil fuel combustion, shown in red, and land use changes like deforestation. The middle panel, in brown, shows how atmospheric CO2 has risen with fossil fuel combustion. Studies of the amounts of the different carbon isotopes in the atmosphere prove that most of the extra CO2 came from fossil fuels. The jagged red line in the rear panel shows how global temperatures have varied greatly from year to year, but rose steeply at the same time that fossil fuel emissions and CO2 rose. Does the chart show cause and effect? To claim that it does not requires one to believe two things. First, some unknown factor suppressed the greenhouse effect. Second, some other unknown factor caused the observed temperature increase. Believe what we know to be true are two things we do not know. The hockey stick plot shows that during the 20th century, northern hemisphere temperatures rose higher and faster than at any time since AD 200, including during the medieval warm period from 950 to 1250. Arctic temperatures also record the hockey stick temperature rise. A close-up of global temperature anomalies from 1880 through 2009 shows 2005 as the hottest year on record and 2009 as the second hottest. Temperature anomalies are the difference between the temperature in any one year and the mean for 1951 through 1980. The vertical green bars estimate the precision of the measurements. 2005 may be about to lose the record, as January through June 2010 was the hottest January through June ever recorded. In the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, there were more record low temperatures in the U.S., shown in blue, than record highs, shown in red. Today, more than twice as many record high temperatures are being set as record lows. The same is true of Australia. As the U.S. enters the second decade of the 21st century, record highs continue to more than double record lows. The growing season, defined as the number of days between the last frost in the spring and the first frost in the fall, is lengthening. Could the sun have caused the observed global warming? No. For one thing, nights have warmed more than days. The vertical axis shows ocean heat content. According to three different studies, the oceans, the main storehouse of Earth's heat, have warmed steadily since about 1970. Also since 1970, the western U.S. has had warmer temperatures and more wildfires, top frame, snows that melt earlier, drying out the soil, 
middle frame and fire seasons that start earlier and last longer and are harder to control, bottom frame. The number and size of these red circles show how western snowfields are melting as much as 20 days earlier in the spring. The depth of the vertical bars below the line shows that the northern hemisphere is losing snow cover. The northern hemisphere is also losing frozen ground or permafrost shown by the depth of the red points. Warmer temperatures melt ice and snow. The world's glaciers are losing ice each year. Northern Hemisphere glaciers are also losing ice. The number of retreating glaciers worldwide shown by the height of the red bars greatly exceeds the number advancing shown in blue. Grinnell Glacier in Glacier National Park lost almost all of its ice between 1938 and 2009. Scientists project that by 2030, Glacier National Park will have no glaciers. The extent or area of Arctic sea ice, shown on the vertical axis, has declined since 1979. The volume of Arctic sea ice has also declined and today is dropping rapidly. Greenland is losing ice. The deeper the blue color, the greater the loss of ice on Greenland. Antarctica is losing ice. Warmer water and meltwater from glaciers and ice caps are raising sea level. In the last few years, sea level has risen at the fastest rate on record. This close-up of satellite measurements shows the steady rise in sea level since 1992. The green to orange to red colors represent increasing ocean acidity since the 1700s as more CO2 has dissolved in the oceans. Increased acidity threatens the ability of marine species in the future to grow and maintain their shells, endangering their survival. Plants and animals are reacting to global warming. Many more northern hemisphere species have moved upslope and north toward cooler temperatures, shown by the bars above the line, then move downslope and south, shown by the bars below the line. The migrations have averaged 6.1 kilometers, or 3.8 miles, per decade. The vertical axis is the distance that bird species in the U.S. have migrated north to cooler temperatures since 1965. Many biological events, such as the timing of breeding, appearance of the first flowers in the spring, butterfly emergence, and the like, are happening earlier, as shown by the bars below the line. 405 plant species in the UK that scientists have tracked since the mid-1700s are flowering earlier. Just since 1990, the regions in which the climate is most favorable for plants in the U.S. have migrated visibly north. The data in these charts come from peer-reviewed studies by world scientists. The data are true. Can global warming be untrue? You decide.